People are always asking me how I make my tracks. It always starts with the drums. That's what inspires me. Pair me up with any kind of drum track and I start writing immediately. That was Vinnie Caliuta on drums. He gave me that as a gift. It was on my hard drive. He had done it at Capitol. I overdubbed, offered to pay him, but he gave it to me as a gift. It was really cool. Click the link below for the online masterclass. So I'm gonna solo Vinny's drums and you'll hear there's a lot of stuff going on that you're not necessarily aware of until you focus on it. A, a lot of cool little events are happening. And of course his pocket is amazing. So I've been listening to Johnny Marr and the Smiths, in particular a song called How Soon Is Now, which is really one of their most amazing songs. So the tune I wrote over Vinny's drums is influenced by that. It's inspired by that. It's got a very simple riff and I double it with the bass. Let me show it to you. like to do on songs like this is ambient parts and so I'll take my echo park delay could be any delay and get the infinite setting that repeats that are just keep cascading and then I turn that on I darken everything I turn down the tone and get this dark infinite delay that sounds like this So for this next track, I hired Victor Indrizzo to do a drum performance and I gave him a mission and that was to imitate another drummer who is one of both of our heroes. For this track, I hired my friend Victor Indrizzo to play drums at his home studio and send me the files. Another drummer that I've had the privilege of playing with is Jim Keltner. Jim Keltner was in a band for a minute <laughs> called Little Village, but they did this one amazing track called Inside Job, and I've always loved this pocket that Jim did on this song. So I asked Victor to basically go after it. And Jim is a hero of Victor's, so I knew he would be honored to do it. Not only did he do it, he nailed it. He excelled at it, I think. He gave me three tracks of percussion too, which really add to it. Let me play it for you. So the first thing I usually do when I have a drum track going is write a rhythm guitar part. That's the basis of the song and the chords. And these chords might change. After I play the bass part, they might turn into different chords. And I keep evaluating it sometime over the course of a few days, kind of in my spare time, deciding if it works or not and how I can make it better. And I keep kind of rewriting it, but this is what I started with. And the turnaround was this. So the next thing I do is I write a bass part. And rather than pick up a bass, so I can move really fast, I just step on an octave pedal. I will always try a real bass, but sometimes this particular thing that I do first, real quick, 
with the octopedal becomes the bass that I can't beat. And this was that situation here. I use the bridge pickup and I always dial in a lot of the direct sound. You can adjust whether you have just all octave below or direct guitar mixed in. I always keep direct so there's a point to it. So you get this combination of the real guitar and the fat octave underneath and that really works. So the part for this went like this. Basically this. And then I go to the four because it is a hybrid blues thing. Now, when you hear this music, notice that I actually gave up that rhythm part that I wrote. What happens is you write something, you write something else, you write something else, I'm talking about parts, and maybe the first part just gets put away because everything else that follows it is more appropriate. And in this particular situation, I preferred to get rid of that original rhythm part that actually defined the song as I layered new stuff. So what I've got is all this ambient guitar stuff and then this bass part. And that was better to solo over. And then the turnaround at the end, I really like because I kind of flash out on the bass and play a cool riff. So the drum performance you're about to hear is actually from a song you already know, a very famous song. I guarantee you already know it. I'm going to tell you what it is in a couple of minutes, but I wrote a different song over it. And it's just kind of to show you how you can totally repurpose a drum track and write something radically different over the top of it. So I just wrote that song and I wrote it over a drum performance that I've had for a long time. And it was a programmed drum part for LaGrange when I taught ZZ Top's LaGrange on my YouTube channel. <laughs> my partner in my business is Nigel Lundemo. He's also a great drummer and a great drum programmer. He's very meticulous and willing to take the time to program drums very much like the original record. So you can recognize this. The great thing about writing over something like this is that they've created a soft section and a loud section, which is an arrangement. It's kind of a pre-existing arrangement that you can capitalize on. So I did a soft section and a loud section. It triggered me to actually do a good arrangement musically because they already did it. And you'll recognize it here. Let me play it for you. Soft, soft section. Loud section. So here's the resource for downloading drum loops. It was founded by Ryan Gruss. It's called Yurt Rock. I know a lot of these musicians, including Victor and Drizzo, Blair Sinta, and Sean Hurley. They're great, and the loops are great, and these guys get compensated fairly for their contributions. So I paid Victor and Drizzo a full session fee for the song I had him do for me. But there's another place where you can hire Victor and Drizzo. You can buy his performances on Yurt Rock. You can either subscribe to Yurt Rock monthly as a membership and get a new artist every Friday in addition to all the content that they already have. Or you can buy individual packages one at a time and the musicians get compensated properly for these things. Another favorite drummer of mine, Blair Sinta. You can buy his package also. The other thing about Yurt Rock is there are a lot of other musicians besides drummers, but they're playing with drummers. So in the case of Charlie Hunter, you get Charlie's loop, but you also get the great groove of Carter McLean. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. If you are a subscriber, please ring the bell. It lets us let you know every time a new video is released. You can also support us by clicking the link below for the online masterclass. As I always say, we're up to over 100 hours of lessons and content, over a thousand videos. There's a 14 day free trial. Take your time, take a long look. We'd love to have you join us.